Underneath the lionfish's pretty bands lie its poisonous spines. Accidental contact with these spines would be painful and perhaps even dangerous. Skylar Miller tirelessly repeats these words of caution to Bahamian students who run the risk of facing these poisonous spines whenever they swim. Near beaches? Warm areas? Everywhere. Everywhere, yeah, we have them everywhere in all sorts of habitats. All on the, the dorsal side here. And how many dorsal spines do you think that a uh, lionfish has? Does anybody know? So there are 13 spines on the dorsal fin of uh, these, these species of lionfish, okay? Remember how Nicola said there are many different species of lionfish? Mm -hmm. But the one that we find here in the Bahamas has 13 dorsal spines, and these are each independent. They can move around. And as you can see, this skin, right, slides down very easily away from the spine. Okay, so this means that I, the tissue, the venomous tissue, is actually contained within this, all right? So if I touch it, it's okay. If I poke myself, envenomate myself, then that's where the problem is. So even if this, even though this fish has been dead for a few days, even though um, the spine is removed, it still possibly contains venom that can harm me. So the, the venom glands, when they are disrupted, they release venom into the victim. And the venom is a, a neurological toxin that affects the nervous system. It can cause extreme pain uh, in humans, allowing for things to occur like paralysis, temporary paralysis, um, blistering, extensive swelling, um, and, and very extreme pain for, for several hours. It may be similar to a wasp sting, an extreme wasp sting at first, that will gradually get worse. Um, there have been some cases, some very rare cases, in which people have died from lionfish and scorpionfish stings. We're not aware of any in the US currently. This is the spine itself here. I think you can see the hard bony structure with the tip. This is the spine. These are the grooves of the spine here. And then this is the venom gland. The lionfish doesn't have a venom gland, so to speak. The poison is enclosed in hundreds of little pouches along the length of the spine. When the spine enters the victim's flesh, the skin tears, the pouches burst, and the poison is absorbed by capillary action. The lionfish has 13 poisonous spines on its dorsal fin, three on the anal fin, and one on each of the two pelvic fins, a total of 18 spines defending it from predators on all sides. In the Red Sea, we see that the lionfish is in balance with the natural e ecosystem. The lionfish is a native uh, predator of the Red Sea, but it also has competitors. Uh, what we see in the Red Sea is we see lots of grouper species that are about the same size and are also very effective predators. So when we see lots of groupers, we see very few lionfishes and vice versa. Unfortunately, this competition between predators in the same category doesn't exist in the Atlantic. Groupers and lionfish quietly observe each other without demonstrating any hostile behavior. In the ocean of the southeast and tropical Caribbean Sea, um, there are really no natural predators that have been documented to actually be preying upon lionfish at a rate that can control their local densities. There is no doubt that wherever it settles, Terroise volitans becomes a super predator that dominates and doesn't share. But this doesn't explain how this rockfish, which is sedentary by nature, has managed to colonize such huge territorial expanses. Nature has made it easy for the lionfish to spread and disperse, thanks to its method of reproduction. The reproduction of the lionfish in its natural habitat has never been observed or filmed. It's only by observing the reproduction of neighboring species that we can attempt to reconstitute it. 
the male performs a mating parade to seduce the female. When the female accepts his attentions, she rises to the surface and releases a gelatinous mass filled with hundreds of thousands of eggs. The male then showers this mass with his sperm and fertilizes the eggs. The jelly-like mass is carried away by the currents. As it drifts, it dissolves and disintegrates, leaving the eggs to disperse over considerable distances. Most of the eggs in the young fish are eaten by all sorts of predators, but so many are fertilized at one time that there are enough survivors to allow Torois Valetans to expand its empire. In addition, the species is particularly fertile. Uh, lionfish have a very robust and uh, vigorous reproductive biology. They are capable of reproducing every three to four days. They cap the females can release over two million eggs per year. Uh, and they can become sexually mature within a year. Didier Noiro is a top-notch professional diver. Didier and Walt Stearns are prepping for a deep water dive that will take them beyond the 230 feet mark. Will they find lionfish at such depths? Okay, clear. The divers must use a very complex system known as the recycler in order to descend to such depths. The recycler provides them with a special gas mix called the trimix. This mix is specifically adapted to high pressure situations. After a long descent, Didier Noiro and Walt Stearns reach a wreck. The area seems, at first, to be free of lionfish. Is Terroise Valetans not able to withstand such depths? Or did this 400-pound grouper take care of him? The suspense doesn't last for long. Lionfish are indeed here. Once again, the usual pattern is confirmed. The lionfish have taken over the wreck, and with the exception of the massive grouper, all the other species have virtually disappeared. We went down to 265 feet and there were still lionfish. Nothing seems to stop them. We continued further down, even further, and we saw as many as we had further up in the 65 to 100 feet range near the reefs. Here we are at a very deep wreck and there are still lionfish. Still lionfish down there. Oh, they're not going to go away. 